Hey guys, today we're in the lab looking at the temperature changes when an acid is neutralized by an alkali. So this is the setup we're gonna use. We've got a beaker and that's just for security. We've got polystyrene cup, which we're gonna put in the beaker. We have a lid for the cup, which has a hole in um, with a thermometer in and into our cup, we are gonna put 30 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. Before you add in any sodium hydroxide, you need to record the temperature with out any sodium hydroxide added in. So this is at 19 degrees. What you need to do is add in five centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid, stir it, and then write down the temperature. So I have my first five centimeters cubed. Pop that in there. Give it a bit of a, maybe a bit of a swirl or a bit of a, a stir. Look at the temperature, look at the temperature when it stops changing. That has got to 23. Now you need to keep adding five centimeters cubed until you get all the way up to 14. Once you've done this experiment um, twice or in three times and worked out the mean for each volume of sodium hydroxide, what you're going to need to do is draw a graph and to do two lines of best fit. Now I know this might sound a bit weird since we're always telling you to draw one line of best fit, except now we want you to do two lines of best fit. One going through the increasing points. Now this line is likely to be quite steep and then one going through the decreasing points and this line is likely to be quite shallow and then you need to look for this point here the point where it crosses over and obviously you're going to do this with a pencil and a ruler except I'm working on my iPad and I don't have a pencil and a ruler you need to draw construction lines and construction lines are really really important so we do need to draw them down to where they cross over and then that amount of sodium hydroxide is how much is going to be needed to neutralize um, the acid that we've added in. So that's roughly what your graph is going to look like. This increase in the slope here is due to the exothermic reaction. That is taking place as neutralization occurs. This decrease in slope here which you'll notice is much shallower is just because you're adding cold into hot and when you add something cold into hot um, it's going to decrease in temperature now when I did this it actually took me quite a lot longer than um, like much more solution than the example would recommended to be able to get numbers so that I could draw a decent graph so your graph might be much wider than what the exam board recommends. Um, that's okay, don't worry about it. Your graph just looks different to other people's. That's absolutely fine. Now, with this experiment, if we are thinking about um, exam questions, one of the big exam questions they might ask about this is health and safety. Because you are using two molar concentrations of acid for this, um, which are actually really, really nasty. So you do not want to get this stuff on your hands. Um, you definitely do not under any circumstances do this without goggles on. Um, you don't want to, I mean, wash your hands straight away. Definitely don't touch your eyes. If you start to feel your hands going soapy, um, that's because the sodium hydroxide is turning your hands into soap, so go and wash your hands. So for this one, I think health and safety could be a big question. Um, other questions could be why you put a lid on the cup, that's to stop the temperature escaping. Polystyrene lid, polystyrene cup, both of those are good um, insulators, that's to keep all of it in. Or why you have it like in a beaker, that's to keep it stable so that it doesn't topple over. Um, this is a nice little practical guys, it's, it's a good one, I hope you liked it.